snail farming offers an interesting agribusiness opportunity in Africa. West Africa is home to the largest species of land snail in the world. The giant African land snail, Agitina species, is known to grow up to 30 cm in length and can be found in dense tropical rainforests across the region of West Africa. These snails are very dogged animals. Um, they have been there from time. We have different species that will do well in the Middle Belt, and the southern part of Nigeria. Up north, you might have some challenges. So down here in Abuja, in our snail pen, we have uh, the giant African land snails. It is very easy to maintain. It is not a technical type of agriculture or um, agribusiness. Snail has a huge demand in the Nigerian market for its unique thirst and nutrition value. Snail meat contains a high amount of protein, iron, calcium, magnesium, vitamin A, and is very low in fats. Over the years, the loss of forest and explosion of populations across the world has affected the supply of snails from the forest to meet demands. Snails otherwise peak from the forest deep in the night now need to be farmed in small to large scales to keep up with the huge demand from homes, restaurants, modern eateries, and high-end hotels. Snail breeders and farmers now produce snails in backyards, small farms, and large farms for profits. Unlike many livestock businesses, snail farming is a low-risk business that has low startup expenses. However, it requires a lot of patience to be successful. Snail farming can be run from small backyards or any piece of land lying waste around your house. Snails are hermaphrodites. They have both male and female sexual organs. They get to meet easily throughout the year. They multiply really fast, laying up to 100 eggs at a time. A snail can also lay eggs several times a year. This high reproduction rate has made snails a pest in many regions of the world. However, their fast reproductive ability can give very high returns on investment. The reproductive rate is very high. Each snail has the ability to lay because it has the male and female gametes infused in it. That's how God made them. And I asked myself why, and, and I got the answer over time. The answer simply is because they, can't, they don't have feet to run away from their predators. So the only way they can stay without being extinct is to multiply in mass. So the average snail the uh, African land snail, giant land snail, can lay between um, between 50 to 150 snail uh, eggs in the laying season. So you could do a rough sample and say maybe half of the eggs die and half reach maturity. So you can imagine the way they multiply. Starting a snail farm requires experience and patience. Some important factors to consider include moisturized environment snails are very easily dehydrated dryness occurs in snails when moisture loss happens and this can lead to hibernation snails require moist conditions with a high relative humidity the presence of wind increases the rate of moisture loss in snails it is therefore important to select a location that guarantees moisture for the snails when establishing a farm for this reason a mist sprinkler will be preferred to a water dripping system. The presence of trees in a snail house can make a good environment for snail farming as the trees can act as windbreakers. For starters, um, the soil should be rich dark loam soil and you should have vegetation with big leaf or big leaves to create some kind of shade and coolness in the cage. You can use vegetation like um, dwarf bananas, you can use cocoa yam, and you can plant, you can plant uh, items like uh, water leaf in the cage, even though the snails will eat the water leaf. But the other items, the other plants I call, will provide shade for the snails. So with this, you should understand that it is a do-it-yourself business and it is easy to run. Suitable soil. Soil is the main habitat of snail. It is expected that the soil will contain some of the chemical requirements and composition for successful snail breeding. Suitable soil must have enough calcium or be fortified with calcium. This is because 
The shell of snails are mainly calcium and this is derived from the soil. The soil should also have the ability to retain enough moisture for the snails to thrive. The soil must neither be acidic, waterlogged or too dry. A loamy soil with low water holding capacity is perfect for snail farming. People, you don't have to invest so much on the housing. You can use local, locally sourced material, you can use bamboo, you can use a couple of blocks and you have your structure. It mustn't be a gigantic structure. For starters, you can start small and see how it goes, then you now get a bigger structure. When you now understand the mechanism, the working mechanism. Snailery or snail house. A good snailery will keep the snails productive. There are several kinds of snailries. It is important that you consider the development stage of the snails. Are the snails newly hatched, young, or mature? Younger snails require comfortable housing that are properly sealed from wind. The housing must be escape proof. Snails can be constructed with decay resistant wood. This include a covered box, a constructed cupboard, patch of concrete protected ground like the foundation of a house. Make a concrete pen with soil deep of about 10 inches or dig a trench and cover it with screen or wire all around to prevent the snails from escaping for larger and commercial production. These must be sheltered from the wind. Extensive methods include more elaborate housing like the mini paddock system and free range housing. Vegetable farms and plantain farms can also be combined with a snail farm to minimize cost. Generally, snails love to stay in cold and dark places. However, the snails must be free from harmful humidity levels. For regulating the temperature, fresh leaves that regularly wet can be used. Every other um, insect, reptile or animal out there would want to come into your snail pen because it is cool, it's conducive, there's food. So while building your snail pen, ensure that you have, ensure that it is insect proof, it is rodent proof, and it is safe. Lizards, snakes, rats, chickens, and some other harmful predators. Wire is a great solution for keeping those animals away. You also have to prevent some harmful smaller ones like termites and ants. Small mesh nets are used to prevent the access of flies to your snails. Flies can cause significant loss to your investment if left unchecked. Flies lay eggs in the snails and when they hatch, they eat up your snails from the inside. There are not many diseases identified in snail, but fungus and bacteria diseases can be spread by contact, especially in overcrowded pens. Now, your biggest challenge as a snail farmer would be maybe during the dry season because snails tend to hibernate during the dry season. It's what they do in the open. But in captivity, when you are rearing them, you do not allow them to hibernate. How do you prevent them from hibernating? By creating a system where you can water them. So you can create a sprinkler system or you can water them with watering cans, maybe um, twice daily or once daily, just to keep the place moist because they require moisture, they, 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 they thrive best in moist environment. So you discover that over time, during the dry season, if you do not carry out these practices well, if you do not feed well, if you do not keep the place moist, you discover that the snails tend to hibernate. And what is hibernation? That is a period in the snail's life where they feel there is scarcity of food, so they shut down their systems to reserve, to conserve energy and wait till the environment is favorable. Maybe during the rainy season, then they unseal themselves and come out. Breeding. With appropriate housing, environment and soil, it is critical to get quality snails, preferably from a forest or a farm. Your last option should be to purchase from the market because these snails are usually stressed. For the purpose of snail farming, however, only the three species of achatina should be considered. These are Achatina achatina lineus, Achatina marginata, and Achatina fulica. These are a genus 
of medium size to very large everything tropical land snails. They are marketable and profitable. Collecting snails from the forest can guarantee an easier adaptability to a new environment when compared to collecting from farms. Collecting snails from the wild is best done in the rainy season. One method involves clearing a piece of land and attracting the snails by placing fruits on the land. Common fruits include watermelon, papaw, banana, and pineapple. The snails can then be collected continuously. High quality breeders of not less than 18 months are obtained from the forest directly and lay much larger eggs. The rainy season is usually the best time to snail snail farming. Snails can also be collected by hatching the eggs collected either from farms or the markets. The eggs can be placed in a container with wet sand and cocoyam leaves or buried underneath porous loamy soil. Exposure to air is not good for snail eggs. It is expected that the snail eggs will hatch into baby snails within 21 to 28 days. Water should be sprinkled on the soil every three days. 100% hatchability is still a challenge for most farmers. However, 50 to 60% hatchability is good enough. It is important to note that high density population of snails in a pen limits growth. It also affects the laying of eggs. Snails in a densely populated area grow more slowly even when food is abundant. They also have a high mortality rate. These snails become smaller adults and lay fewer clutches of eggs, have fewer eggs per clutch, and the eggs have a lower hatch rate. If the snails are too densely packed, they may not breed at all. The accumulating slime suppresses reproduction. Other disadvantages include high rates of parasitism and ease of transmission of diseases. On the other hand, snails in groups of 100 breed better than when only a few snails are confined together. Perhaps they have more potential mates from which to choose. Dwarfing is quite common in snail farming and it is attributed mainly to rearing condition. A maximum of about 20 mature snails per square meter is recommended, 40 per square meter for medium size and 100 for smoothie smell. If snail pen is large enough, it should be divided into paddocks of no more than 4 by 4 meters to prevent overcrowding and to maintain a regular stocking density. Wire net is ideal for this purpose. Feeding Feeding is the most important factor in snail farming. Snail can be fed with almost any kind of fruits, leaves and household waste as long as it does not contain salt. Popular fruit consumed by snails include purple, tomatoes, mango, watermelon, eggplant, pineapple, cucumber, amongst others. It also consumes vegetables and leaves like cabbage, eggplant leaves, lettuce, okra, and purple leaves. It is also recommended that snails are fed calcium as it helps in growing its shell. Low calcium intake will slow their growth rate and cause the shells to be thinner. The outer leaves of cabbage can be a good source of calcium because it has a higher percentage of calcium when compared to the inner layers. The pens can also be enriched with another cheap but effective calcium source, a broken rock fragment of limestone. Just place them as licking stones in pens or the habitat where you plan to house your snails. You can easily gather eggshells from your kitchen scraps, grind them into powdered form and mix with the feed. It's also a good source of calcium that will cost you nothing. Baby snails are fed in a nursery with microorganisms from decaying bananas and vegetables in a soil substrate fortified with calcium. Adult snails can eat other fruits and other organic materials including soils. However, younger snails prevent softer and juicier parts of fruit to consume. It is advised that you target fruit markets, nearby gardens and bushes instead of buying fresh fruits and leaves to reduce feeding costs. You can actually go to the marketplace where, um, where these feeds, where um, lettuce cook, where you have lettuce being washed and everything, the ones, the parts that are not needed are thrown away. You can gather it 
rinse it up and feed it to your snails. And that's about it. As I said, it's almost no cost. Harvesting. Maturity of snails take between 15 and 24 months. A minimum of 12 months is usually required for mature snails to be harvested. It takes uh, from 18 to 24 months to get an average snail, to get a snail from egg to maturity. Maturity is the big large table size. Check the brim of the shell. For mature snails, the brim is thicker and harder than other parts of the shell. Do not harvest all your mature snails for the market. Keep a few for breeding and to serve a base stock. Snail farming is lucrative if you have the right knowledge and experience. <laughs>